Hello, ladies and gentlemen. As always, I'm your host, Airsoft Al, the con man's airsofter who talks about German pistols because I absolutely love them. Now, today we are talking about a question that I've been asked a lot, actually, by friends, by fellow viewers, things like that. And that question is, how is the M712 so frictionally fast? And to simply put, it all comes down to the design of the gun itself. You see, the Mauser pistol, be it the C96 or the M712 or any of the other copies of the pistol, uses the same action that was developed in the 1800s, or at least late 1800s. Uh, 1896, to be exact. I believe 1896. I might be wrong on that. But either way, though, the Mauser action is a simple blowback design. It is essentially the first successful automatic handgun that was used by military, commercial, and otherwise. And the way it works is simply put, literally just that it's a simple design that is a proven concept it, it, it literally is just this big square block here moving back and forth and with the airsoft variant unlike say a um standard automatic like well actually this is a pretty good example let me go grab another handgun that is still a, that is still around so uh, let me grab a 1911 real quick. With a 1911 or any other automatic handgun, the entire slide moves, giving you that essential quick action. However, unlike most, the entire slide has to move, which causes the gun to move with it, including the belt, including the barrel tilting a bit. I don't know if you can see that, but essentially that's what's going on. The slide is moving. However. With the, C, uh, with the Mauser C96 design. The entire frame does not move at all, if not very little. In fact, the frame only moves slightly, just a slightly bit. When in reality, it's the entire square block here that's moving, giving you just quick, fast time in response. And the Airsoft variant is really good because... Well, to simply put, it, it's sort of like a short stroke system in a weird way. I, I know I might be using that term wrong, but that's essentially what's going on because when you actually look at how far back the Mauser has to go for it to actually engage only that far. It only has to go that far to engage the hammer, the internal hammer, and then quickly go back to put in another round. Unlike the Mauser here, which you're probably seeing a little video right here that's showing the actual Mauser action itself, it, it doesn't really travel that far back, and it, again, it's just one of those designs of, it definitely works and is the design of the era, but yet it's still a very good, capable gun. It is designed specifically to be that good, capable gun. And that's what I love about it. That's what I love about the Mauser. It's just simple. You don't have any sort of moving parts. It's all clockwork and spring. And even the airsoft variant sort of replicates that with very minor, if not a lot of moving parts. The only real major moving part is just this entire square assembly right here. And even then, that's it. There isn't a lot to it. There isn't a lot that's going to make it basically break very easily. Unlike, once again, going back to the 1911... Unlike a simple, standard blowback handgun, you have the entire slide moving. You have not only the slide moving, you have also the hammer being put into play, you have the magazine loading up, you have a internal hammer being cocked, and you have the nozzle being basically doing that. You upscale that to something a little bigger, and ha also being a select fire weapon, like, well, a, a deagle, you also have the same moving parts. You have the entire slide moving back, you have the hammer being engaged, you have the internal hammer being engaged, and then you have this moving bit right here pulling back, as well as it going forward, and once again engaging around into the chamber. Once again, it's not... you get what I'm saying. It basically does all this at the same time. And while you're doing that, of course, you are literally having this bit of recoil right here. And definitely mitigation of recoil is a good thing. I mean, the Mauser M712 ain't no different, and when compared to other handguns where you have an entire slide moving back, 
the M712 is a little bit more controllable, actually. Actually, recoil on both the real steel and the airsoft variant of the M712 is much more better mitigation of recoil than, say, a Deagle or even the 1911. But that comes down to German engineering and German weapon technology, which is superior. And once again, to those who are probably saying, oh, you are praising the Germans way too damn much, I present to you this clip once again. No, I'm not defending German technical superiority. I'm stating the fucking obvious. The Germans know how to make good guns. Simple as that. Second are the Americans. Third of third of the British. Fourth for the Russians. And fifth for the French. I'm just saying, weapons technology, Germany all the way. Second is America, because America. Anyway, back to the M712. Now you're probably wondering, how does the M712 actually achieve the fast fire rate and have that immediate mitigation of recoil? Well, there is a powerful spring in this that actually allows to basically put it back into battery, which is not that bad. And of course, the magazine being CO2 also helps with that as well, since CO2 is a lot more consistent than green gas. Now, I'm not saying that the, the green gas slash propane version of the M712 ain't that bad. No, not really. I'm saying it's actually a pretty good gun, and of course, you know, propane is good for CQB, but CO2 is actually better in cold weather, I'm just saying. And of course, the action being the way it is, and of course, another good plus to the M712 and its fast fire rate, has to be its self-contained unit. Like I said, the entire unit of the gun itself is completely self-contained in just this area right here. And the entire action works just like that. Now I have no fair warning to make this thing go a little faster. I did put a double spring mod in this inside the actual guide itself. So this thing's going to fire a little bit more freakishly fast. And if you're wondering why I'm doing that, it's because uh, there's a lot of uh, lube in here that's going to kind of slow it down a little bit. <laughs> down a little bit. That's funny. Ah, that's funny. So I'm going to wipe it down a little bit before we go to the shooting test and have a little bit of slow motion for you guys to actually see what this thing looks like in slow motion. So uh, before we even get to that, let's let's see what kind of groupings we're getting with this, and then we'll go to the slow motion footage of this thing firing. Okay? Okay.
if you're uh, wondering what the target kind of looks like, this is the target. Yeah, not exactly uh, good and full out, because here's the thing. Just like the actual M712 itself, full auto, kind of uncontrollable when you're holding it one-handed. When you have an actual buttstock with it, the full auto capability is actually a lot more controllable and is much more preferable to actually have the buttstock on the M712. But in terms of actually just, yeah. Um, these groupings right here are from the burst, actually. Like, if you can hold it in place and you can actually fire it, yes, it will do that, but... Again, full auto on this thing ain't exactly controllable. But, let's actually break it down more or less of, you know, just how the thing actually can be controllable in full auto and sort of um, what you can do to not go through your magazine like a fat man and all you can eat taco bar. Now, the magazine itself holds 32 rounds. Yes, 32 rounds. And it is a very nice, hefty CO2 magazine, which is only a margin of the weight for this pistol and even though the pistol itself is a little bit heavy you're still going to have a little bit of issues with the uh yeah the lotterness of it now like i said the, to control it it's controllable in some semi-auto and you definitely saw how fast it is in some automatic and definitely the reset of it because again this action right here is a great it's just perfect it's great it's german it is meant for quick follow-up shots and you can definitely get some quick follow-up shots because if you actually look at where my finger is Watch where the reset is. Pretty short distance for the reset on the trigger, which means you can get quick follow-up shots. Now, it is a little bit difficult to actually understand where that break is in the actual pistol itself because you get this sort of spongy feeling, essentially, quoting Tim from Red Bull Fairsoft. But, on some automatic, it is a well good handgun, and you definitely get those quick follow-up shots and or finger bang, essentially, if you're wanting to finger bang the trigger, which, that's an old arcade cabinet slang that for light gun cabinets where you would literally put your other trigger finger hold the gun like your whole like your life depends on it and just do that and if you had this thing on some automatic you could finger bang this thing faster than the actual full auto which that's not true the full auto capability on this thing is insane it is equivalent to that of a polar star engine and the reason for that is once again the entire block right here this entire square firing block which controls the entire gun itself and with the double spring mod in there, it is even freakishly faster. And yes, the single spring in there, this is actually faster than what it, it was with the single spring. And I can assure you that a double spring mod on this will make you evil to no degree. So, yeah. Uh, fair warning to those who wish to do the double spring mod for this. And, uh, yeah. It's evil! But it doesn't hinder your ability to actually prime the gun itself. It, it does work fairly well. Now, understand that full auto on this thing is extremely uncontrollable. The hop-up screw hole will be right here. So in terms of distance, you're going to need that distance. But if you put a Type 4 barrel in here, which is something I might actually do, you're going to get a little bit more capability, a lot more controllability, I bet, or at least better groupings out of it with the standard barrel that's in here. But with the standard barrel in there, it, the, the full auto in this actually does do well. But I am going to try and find an Allen screw or something to actually put in there so I can actually get the distance for this thing, because this thing on full auto and distance is going to be insane. Now, another thing about this is that, once again, like I said, it's freakishly fast, because it's just the design of it, the simple block. And you saw the slow-mo, you saw how it is. You see the groupings on this. And the fact that you're able to get, depending on how many rotations, how many movements the bolt moved, and you're more than welcome to count, in that frame, in that second. Because I went through at least one-third of the magazine on the first burst. I went through two-thirds of the magazine on the second burst, and then I went through thirds of the magazine on the third burst, 
if you're really good and you're able to handle that, and you're able to basically have trigger discipline in full auto, you might be able to get at least five rounds down range on full auto, or even just simple three round burst without even thinking, without even trying in a split second, and all the and all the people on the receiving end are gonna hear is burnt, burnt, burnt. You essentially have an A10 Warthog in your hand. And uh, before anyone asks, yes, invest in more of these. I know I sure as hell am because uh, <laughs> this thing will go through CO2 in two magazines. Unless you're, unless you HPA it, then you have more magazines essentially. And this thing on HPA, I dare say, will be faster than what it is. And if you can 3D print more magazines, or at least have better magazines, or even the, ex the crazy extended mags that are longer than this magazine here, because, no joke, this is the standard magazine for the Mauser M712. And the airsoft variant is 32 rounds, when the actual extended magazine in the real steel was 20 rounds. So if you extend that magazine to the crazier one for like the carbine, the trench carbine variant, which had a larger magazine, then I dare say you are going to have a hell of a time with the massive capata massive magazine capacity on the <laughs> I'm thinking of evil thoughts right now with this thing cuz oh the evilness I could do either way though the Mauser M712 is a good handgun it's fat it's freakishly fast and with the actual real still having the real still variant of this having 9000 rounds a minute break that down to seconds I dare you to use the math on that one with this one, I dare say it has more than 9,000 9, rounds a second, or 9,000 rounds a minute with the airsoft variant. I, I dare say it probably has more than 9,000 rounds a minute. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Like, for those of you who are actually a lot smarter than me in terms of mathematics and the actual mechanics of this, because I know how the thing works. I don't know the math behind it. I can look at it, I can fix it, I can break it down, I can tell you what each part does, but I cannot tell you for the life of me the math of it because I suck at mathematics. So, those of you who are a lot smarter than me and probably have the big brain degree to go behind it, please tell me the math in the comment section behind this thing. And, like I said before, this thing is the world's fastest airsoft gas blowback. And I dare anyone to try and say otherwise. Like, if you can buy a Mauser M712, be it the CO2 variant, which I would say CO2, or the green gas slash propane variants of it, compare this to the other handguns that have full slides going back and forth, and I would love to actually see that comparison. I will even feature your video on this channel and even your mathematical and mechanical explanations behind it. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Mauser M712 the reason for it being the fastest handgun in the world and why it's so freakishly fast is simply because of the German design. It is simply because of the firing block here. It is simply because of the bolt. It is simply because it is designed by Germans to be not only a freakishly fast handgun, but also effectively fast handgun. And you can bet I'm going to try and get a stock for this thing because I'm not using this thing one-handed. I'd rather have a comfortable stock to make it an effective pistol carbine, so that way I can actually use the full auto effectively. Yes, you heard correctly, full auto effectively. Anywho, if you have any other questions about how handguns work, or at least how the gas systems work in general, be it from, say, the Deagle, which is of course the KWC, which has select fire capability, or even the 1911, then let me know in the comments section down below, and I will try my best to do those videos and sort of explain it down as bare bones as possible. And would you guys consider donating to our PayPal? It's folks like you that actually were able to get the Mauser M712 and even the KWC De De uh, Desert Eagle, and maybe with your help we'll be able to get the carbine stock to go with the Mauser M712. Who knows? Anyway, let me know in the comments section down below what you think of the Mauser M712, and if it is in fact the fastest handgun in the world, bar none it is, and let me know down below what you think of just the Mauser pistol in general, and if you want to give your explanation on how the thing works, and or want to actually do a video comparing the Mauser M712 to other fast shooting handguns in Airsoft, let me know down below, and maybe we'll do a collaboration. Who knows? Either way, though, Thank you all for watching, and as always, I've been Airsoft Al, the Common Man's Airsofter, who answers 
gun questions because I'm a gun nut. And would you kindly consider leaving a like, dislike, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment down below. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you lovely people in the next video. Till next time. Later.